In this video, we're going to look at how to calibrate a spectrum that you have captured with the software. Now, you could be using a FITS file, you could be using a video file. Regardless of the file you're using, the sequence is the same. Now, several very important points when you're starting out. The most important one is start out with a type A star like Vega, because these stars have the most prominent hydrogen bomber lines that will make things much, much easier for you. Also, make sure that you have the right exposure levels so that you can detect the data. We have a video that discusses this. Let's come up here to the Help menu and then select Video Library. Review this pixel map video to determine whether you've got the right exposure levels. Now, on the right side, it's important to know how to move around this graph screen. I'll click in it once so it's my current area, and then I can use my mouse roller wheel to roll in and out. I can also use control page up and page down if I'm on a laptop. My left mouse button held down allows me to pan around. And I can use a double click to pull all the way out to the full view. That's an important one to remember. You'll notice that the x-axis currently is in pixels. The process of calibrating is to convert the x-axis to wavelength in angstroms. It currently goes to about 800 pixels, and that's because our image is 800 pixels across. The y-axis here represents the intensity in the image between the orange lines. So, for example, the software summed up each column in this area, and it shows up as that peak in intensity here. And this area here, that intensity is represented by the graph over on the right. So what we're going to do when we calibrate is tell the software two known points on this graph so that it can convert from pixels to angstroms. Let's see how that's done. I'll come down here and click on Calibrate and then make sure that I'm on the linear calibration window. This simply requires two known points. If you're using a low resolution grading, the first point will be the actual star. That makes it really easy. If you're using a higher resolution slit device, then you'll use a calibration lamp or some known points in your target. Let's see how easy it is to enter these two points and calibrate. I'm going to come over here, and as I hover my mouse, we can see in the balloon help, it's showing us the x-axis pixel value. Now I'm going to hold my left mouse button down and zoom in a little bit. Here we again can see the peak, and as I hover, we can see the pixel values. And we can change the number of decimal points throughout the system on the options screen. We can see there it's about 35 pixels. So in order to get that into the system, I could either type it into that top field or just click on it like this, and it got filled in automatically. Now, what's the wavelength of this line? I'm going to double click and zoom out. Now, remember, this is the starlight coming straight through our grating. There's no deflection of this light, so this is zero angstroms. So now we're done with the first of the two points we need to enter. Now point number two, the second point that we're going to enter is where it becomes really important to start out with a type A star like Vega that has very clear hydrogen bomber lines like type A stars do. On most cameras, you're going to see a big dip to the left of the major peak, as we see right here, which is the hydrogen beta line. It may take some trial and error to find it, as you'll see as we move on. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and hover over it, and when I click, the pixel value got transferred. And now the final step is to enter the wavelength. Now the hydrogen beta line is at 4861 angstrom, so we would type that in here. If we don't get it right the first time, we can come back and change this value, and we'll show you now how it works. When I click Apply, you can see that the x-axis is now in angstroms. So we're now calibrated, but the question is, did we do the calibration right? So what I'm going to do is click on this Elements Toolbar button and ask the software to show me where the hydrogen bomber lines should be. And as we look over on the right, we can see that those vertical reference lines intersect with our data. So we're seeing the hydrogen alpha, beta, if I'd had a little less coffee, I'd be a little bit better pointing to these. There's the gamma and the delta. So we've done our calibration properly. If these lines didn't line up, we could go back to the Calibrate screen and change that fourth field. Now there's another way to check our work against real data, 
and that's to select reference and then come down here to reference library. Now Vega is a type A05 star so let's come over here and select that star and now we're seeing a blue graph which is scientific data and we can see that the dips or the absorption lines that the features in this spectrum line up with our data. So this is a good way to confirm that we've done our calibration properly. And after we've calibrated, we'll see a number up here, which is our angstroms per pixel. This number should be in the range of about 10 to 20. And it's controlled by the number of lines per millimeter, as well as your grading spacing. See this URL on our website for an additional discussion about this number. This number is very useful in subsequent calibrations. Take a look at this video either in the software here or video 24 on the site, One Point Calibration Revisited. Because once you've done a calibration on Vega or another type A star, you never have to identify a feature in a spectrum again to calibrate. You use the One Point Calibration Procedure. That's why we emphasize so much to start out on a type A star. A lot of amateur astronomers start out on a more common type M star, for example. But the features on most other objects are much more difficult to identify than the simple peaks that we just saw on Vega as a type A star.